So let's understand the difference between the user initiated and the triggered first. So the name says user initiated. In, it means the user, it means developer is initiating the send. So if you will talk about any promotional email or maybe any, uh, you know, informative email. So for example, we are having a new product launch and we want to inform about this to all our customers that uh, this, is a product, this is the product that we are launching. Or maybe there is a Christmas sale or Diwali sale that we want to inform, right? So if it is initiating by us, if it is initiated by the you know campaign manager, the developer, or maybe the company, right? So customer is not asking for these emails. We are sending these emails from our side. Now, versus the trigger send. So trigger send are those emails which are initiated by the customer. So if we'll talk about a password reset email, right? Or a OTP email, or maybe you know any kind of a transactional email or a triggered email in which the customer is initiating the um actually customer initiating the send so these are called the triggered sends so these are the differences by functionality or like you know, what are differences from a user perspective but technically if you look at it so in interactions we have this user initiated emails and the triggered emails so user initiated emails we will cover in detail when we will talk about the automation studio uh, because um, um, there we will see like uh, how we can develop our user initiated email and the triggered email. So for this, we would need API. So in the like in the upcoming sessions, we will be talking about the triggered emails, and then there we will see that uh, how you can use the API to make a triggered call or to make uh, to execute the triggered email. Okay, but I hope you understood the functionality was different that the user initiated email is always uh, email that is initiated by us. Okay, and not the user, uh, like not the end user, not the customer and the trigger send is always initiated by the um, customer. And then we have a sales for send. Um, okay, we don't have a sales for send available over here. But uh, Salesforce send is generally used to uh, send the tracking data back to Salesforce. So what happens uh, when we have the system, you know, marketing cloud and then the Salesforce, both systems are integrated with each other. Now, in that case, if we are sending an email to a Salesforce contact, so what does that mean? We have a Salesforce system and in which we have, you know, a lot of contacts, uh, you know, these are the customers and now, um, each contact has this contact ID or a contact key. So that is a unique identifier of a contact. Uh, in marketing cloud, we have subscribers and subscriber has a unique identifier called subscriber key and the subscriber ID. Similarly, in Salesforce, a contact has a unique identifier called contact key. Now, if we are sending uh, email to a contact using that uh, contact key, uh and that to a salesforce send so salesforce send is not uh you know a uh, special send or is not a different send what happens uh, since this account is not integrated we are not able to see the salesforce send over here but what generally happens is that we have that folder over here for the salesforce send uh whatever the email we have uh, developed we can you know put that into that folder and then uh, we can just trigger the sales for send um okay. i don't have the screenshots also okay so basically what happens that uh this is how we are conf configuring in you know, guided send and test send and then you know all these things similarly we just we have to create one sales for send uh we have to choose the email message the target audience and everything and then we will send the email but now how marketing cloud is going to identify that okay this is the contact this is the same subscriber uh whose contact whose respective contact exists in salesforce as well with the help of the contact key so that is a thing okay. so don't worry about the salesforce and as of now uh we'll be mainly focusing on these four cents uh guided send test send, and then the user initiative and the triggered 
Okay, uh, let's talk about the personalization string now. Uh, so personalization is string. So as the name says, we are going to personalize the email message, right? So you must have seen the email whenever you receive from uh, any of the organization. They, you know, generally have these uh, personalized uh, messages or personalization, uh, you know, uh, greetings, something like that. Okay, hi, and then you know the name of the customer or maybe our you know order number. So whatever like it is exclusive to that particular customer it means it is personalized so it is not a general communication uh, the message contains some personalization so if we uh, place an order on amazon.com and we receive this communication and it says that you can know, hire customer name and then you say that okay your order number is this so the order number is always exclusive to a customer who has placed this order right so the same order number will not show in any other email message um and then uh, you know let the order or details or something like that so these are the personalized emails because these are exclusive to that particular customer only so how we can make our email message personalized so this is very easy uh we will just quickly look at it So in order to make an email message a personalized one, we have to use the personalization strings. Now, how do we identify or how do we write a personalization string? So the identification of the personalization string is by, uh, so we have these two percentage signs followed by uh, a string and then followed by two percentage signs. <clears throat> so we have two types of personalization strings. One is the system and another one is the uh, user defined. Now, what ha happens is that uh, we have some profile attributes and we have some other attributes as well. So, marketing cloud says that okay, uh, if you want to personalize, uh, I'm giving you some of the personalization strings that you can use in your email message to personalize it. So, this is so this is you know uh, the profile attributes that we can use and we can make the um, uh, email message personalized so for example if i want to include the email address or maybe if i want to include a gender of the uh, subscriber in the email right or if i want to use marital status or maybe a salutation or maybe the location right so sorry So you just have to click on the personalization button and then it will add the location over here. So these are profile attributes. So we have already discussed about the profile attributes. Um, so you can go through once. Okay. So we have the complete list over here. Um, So this is the complete list. So it says that if you want to include the full name of the month in the email, uh, we can do that, right? So if you want to show that, okay, your order, like we have placed the order in this month, right? And we want to show the month dynamically. So let's say if I'm sending this email in this month, it will show in today's, um, like what is the month, uh, current month, and then, um, maybe if i'll send the next month so it will show the next month so we have the personalization strings for these things so we'll be talking about few frequently used like uh, which are frequently used and then you can go through all the personalization strings 
um, and let me know if you face any issues. So the one thing is that uh, we have profile attributes you know, that we can create and then we can personalize with the help of that as well. Um, the another thing is that these are the system personalization strings uh, which are given by the system. Okay, so we'll have to use this way only. So for example, if I'll um, copy this thing and uh, paste it over here and with the preview and test, what will happen? It will show me the current um, month. Okay, so it is showing me my as a month in which the email is being sent. Uh, so first one is we can use the uh, profile attributes or the preference attributes. The other way is that we can use the uh, strings given by the system. Now third way to personalize is this uh, using personalization string is by uh, using the field in the data extension. So right now, when I do the preview and test, I am selecting this uh, data extension for the preview, right? Uh, this is a data extension. I want to personalize it with the customer ID. So I want to see that um, your customer ID is this, right? So and for each customer, it will be different. So I want to say your customer ID is and then double percentage signs and then I'll have to uh, sorry. customer ID and I'll do the sorry I have misspelled it so it says there is no a field by the name customer ID because we have used double s Okay, so it says your customer ID is B40058. So uh, we are using this particular subscriber for the preview, right? When we move on to the next subscriber, it says 4004, right? So when we will be sending this email uh, to let's say 100 subscribers, 200 different subscribers, then uh, this uh, particular customer ID will change dynamically based on the subscriber. So if you want to personalize, we have three different ways. We can use the profile and preference attributes. We can use the system strings, and then we can also use the uh, fields that we have in our data extension. Generally, we use the fields that we have in our data extension, um, and we don't rely on the profile attributes. Okay, so we can you know personalize it with the first name that uh, hi, something like that hello. Let's see. Hello, and then first name. Your order has been placed. And your order number is something. Your order number is this. So it is something like that. Okay, so this is how we can personalize the email, and it is just not limited to the uh, body of the email message. But we can also do the same thing in the subject line in the pre header where we want to write. Uh, we can do that. So in subject line also. So in subject line also, we can uh, use the personalization strings. Here we have also the symbol, or maybe if you want to just include, you can do that. In pre header also, you can write the. So in subject line, pre header, body, wherever you want to write, you can do that.